Kevin Watkins. I'm director here <laughs> at ODI. I'd, just to welcome everybody. Um, I, I want to start by <laughs> actually thanking KY for being here, because although he looks in really good shape, <laughs> th th this is actually the last leg of a global tour. So, you know, this is a bit like sort of Rolling Stones yeah. concert that has been to Johannesburg, <laughs> Washington, <coughs> Brussels, uh, Paris, Paris, and, um, and many other Accra. places. Accra. <laughs> so we're, we're hugely <laughs> appreciative that you've managed to drag yourself to London for the last leg of the tour. And um, as we all know, you get the best performance on the last <laughs> leg of, uh, of the tour. So you, you thank you, KY, for, for being here. And the, the, the reason that we're here is to discuss this report, Growth with, uh, with Depth, the inaugural report of um, mm -hmm. ASET. And I, I think before I introduce the panel, just maybe give a couple of introductory thoughts that you know, there's a huge amount of technical detail and analytics in this report, but I think it goes right, right to the heart of one of the great development challenges of our day, actually. And that, that is the gap between the growth that we see across Africa, I mean, not entirely across Africa, but across much of the reason, um, and transformation. And, by, and, th and there are various ways that you can measure that gap. You know, one obvious way that economists would typically measure it would be by looking at total factor productivity. And I know the data is ropey on, on that for, for much of Africa. But if you, if you look in agriculture, that there, you know, there have been improvements in total factor productivity over the past decade, but it's still lagging way behind, or a, a long way behind the rest of the developing world, which has big implications for food security and, and, and growth and, and food prices. Another way would be through gross fixed capital formation. And it, it's quite interesting. I think there's a lot of resonance between the themes you address here and the themes in the last least developed countries report. Because one of the anomalies that they identify is this paradox of high growth mm -hmm. in countries where gross fixed capital formation is actually falling, mm -hmm. yeah, which is historically quite an unusual picture, but, and, and I think quite an important one. And we know also that if you look at the numbers on value added, you know, value added in manufacturing, value added in industry, that you know, growth in Africa has been associated with a shrinkage of value added in those sectors and, a, and an increase in the service sector. The, the, there, are, there are wider reasons why I think this report is really critically important, and I, and I think you, 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 know, you, you touch on them in, in various places. Because you know, these aren't just technical economic issues. It, this is about how do you convert growth into poverty reduction and human development? It's, you know, it's difficult to do that when you have the sort of underlying savings numbers that you, we see in Africa, the, the underlying factor productivity numbers. How do you convert growth into jobs creation, you know, which has been a central weakness of the experience of the last 10 years? And, and critically, how do you exploit this demographic window of opportunity in Africa that you know, if you can't raise productivity, generate the jobs, draw on that pool of, uh, y of a younger mm -hmm. labor force. You know, it clearly doesn't bode well for the, for the region. Um, you know, I think many of the things that you, you know, one of the things I think is really exciting about the report is that you look at a lot of, you know, themes that are quite traditional in the growth literature in terms of the analytics of East Asia, you know, of understanding the role of human capital and skills, the reallocation of labor, the role of diversification um, and the importance of scale and infrastructure. But you, you, you really give it a very distinctive um, African twist. So, you know, I think there's a, there's a, there's a lot in this report to discuss. Um, we have a series of um, brief presentations. KY, well, you're, you're going to speak for just five, five, five minutes. We're then going to pass over to your Ansu, who's going to present the key findings of the report and the analysis in the report for around 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Tony Burden, who's head of growth and resilience at, at DFID, will speak for around seven minutes. Um, David Booth, who's a research fellow at ODI, will also speak for around um, seven minutes. Mavis Awusu uh, Giamfi from SAVE, who will speak um, mm -hmm. also for seven minutes. Actually, everyone's yeah. <laughs> speaking for seven minutes. So this is uh, this divided it all up. Yeah, <laughs> actually, this is dirt. You, know, you, leave, you leave it to the economists, and you end up with these. 
And then Dirk uh, Willem Teveld is going to speak for 70 minutes. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's really seven, <laughs> just in case you get uh, yeah. ideas. <laughs> so, KY, I'm going to pass over sure, to sure, you sure. to set the ball rolling. Thank